Congressman Gohmert is up against Democrat Hank Gilbert in this election. Gilbert is a cattle rancher from Tyler who ran twice to be the state's commissioner of agriculture. I sat down with him earlier this week. Hank, first thing, it's been you know, about a decade since you last ran for office and obviously the ag commissioner is a different race than Congress. So just to start off, introduce yourself a little bit tell people what your priorities would be if you're elected to Congress. Well, I mean, I know this is a completely different uh, race than I've ever been involved in, and, and it's a learning experience. Uh, but I just felt like we need representation. You know, I've been uh, following Louis Gohmert for several years. My wife, my late wife, had tried to get me to run against him several times. And, um, about the Russia hoax. You know, after talking to people in Washington, I know a lot of people that work up there on the Hill you know, in staff positions and things. And, and when I found out that basically the Republican caucus has basically kicked him out of the caucus, he and Steve King, uh, and he has little to no input into decision making or lawmaking or anything else, that on top of the fact that after 16 years, he's never really done anything in the way of legislation to help grow East Texas, um, then I felt somebody needed to step up and run against him. Uh, I'm at a point in my life, my wife passed away about three years ago, both my kids have gotten married, my business kind of takes care of itself, and I don't just necessarily need to stand out there in the pasture and watch cows eat all day. Uh, so I'm at a point in my life where I can do this. Um, but there's so many things that, that, that we need. You know, 30% of the people in this congressional district don't have access to broadband, no internet access at all. Uh, and if COVID hadn't taught us anything, it's taught us how important internet is, uh, particularly when it comes to education um, and to business. You know, you, you, it, in today's climate, you just can't operate a business or run a business and expect to be successful unless you have uh, can, can reach people outside of your area, and the only way you can do that is through the internet. Uh, a lot of those same people can't even get 5G cell service. You know, yet every time a, a measure comes up in the House to deal with that type of infrastructure, Louis Gohmert votes against it. So that's, you know, one of the issues I'm running on. Of course, health care, uh, you know, we're probably a week after the election, uh, the Supreme Court's going to hear the case on the ACA, and I would imagine by the end of the year they'll rule against the constitutionality of the ACA only because of the politics of the court, uh, and it'll be gone. And a large part of our community will lose the only health, health insurance they can afford, including myself. And, you know, we've lost four rural hospitals in this district uh, under Louis Gohmert's watch. And talking with the, the CEOs of the, of the hospital groups here, particularly uh, UT Health, which used to be ETMC, the primary reason was that because so many people are uninsured and because the state never took the Medicaid dollars from the ACA, that, you know, the hospitals are required to treat anybody that walks in the door. And if they can't get reimbursed for that treatment, they can't stay open. And that's why they closed. And one of the major reasons that, you know, industry has left and no industry has come back to replace it throughout this district is two things. One, lack of rural hospitals in areas where they might want to locate. And two, the lack of broadband service, lack of internet. Those are the two drivers that are keeping jobs from flooding in here. I know people that own businesses and companies across this country, and they would love to relocate here, not only because we have such a, uh, uh, an available workforce, but because we have so many institutions of higher learning. You know, in this district, there's 12 or 13 colleges and universities and trade schools that they could partner with to, to train their employees of what they need them to do, but they won't come for those two reasons. And I know our congressman knows that, yet he's done nothing to facilitate that. And to me, that's totally unacceptable. More with Hank Gilbert after the break, including why he didn't love the first coronavirus stimulus bill, but would have voted for it anyway, and what he would want to see from another one. Stay with us.
Well, let's rejoin our conversation with Hank Gilbert about his campaign for Congress. Do you think, speaking of government spending, should there be another coronavirus relief package? And if you think there should be, what do you think it would look like? You know, I travel across this state uh, quite often. And it seems like, as a matter of fact, I took a trip a couple of weeks ago out of state to, for business. And I drove and I saw more people on the street, living on the street, than I've seen in a long time. Um, and I believe it's because that we've gone, what, six months now since the first relief package. Um, and even though they say there's a non-eviction order in place, it's, it's anything but that. I mean, in, in, in one sense, you can't blame the, the property owners because they need income too. Uh, and they're not getting it from this relief package. Um, we've got to do something to help people. You know, everybody asks me, so, well, you're a fiscal conservative. How would you have voted on that first relief package? And I said, ultimately, I probably would have voted for it because it's the humanitarian and the Christian thing to do uh, for the people. I said, but I would have argued it until the cows came home just because of the way they had the rest of the money allocated. We're going to give $500 billion in grants to big companies, but $300 billion to mom and pop businesses in the form of loans. And to me, that was backwards because those big companies have the ability to go to the bank and borrow the money, but we gave it to them for free. And these mom and pops are struggling and they can't get that type of financing from the bank. Those are the ones we should have given it to. Because it's just like, you know, I don't, I studied enough about economics to know that when you put money in the hand of individuals that need that money, and I'm talking about families or mom and pop businesses, they're going to spend almost every dime of that money. And it's going to regenerate in our economy seven to ten times. Whereas those big corporations, they're not going to spend all that money. And they're certainly not going to spend it all at one time. So I thought that part of the bill was backwards. And, and if in this next bill that they've been trying to get passed, I think they've corrected that problem somewhat. Uh, and I would cut out the big businesses and the big corporations because they have the ability to borrow the money on their own. Uh, but our mom and pops are struggling. You see it around Tyler. You see it uh, in your travels through the district as a reporter. All these little places that used to be open that and now they're closed. And not only is, is that family hurting, but all the employees that they had are as well. So yeah, we've got to do something. I mean, I, I'm strong enough in my faith to know that, uh, uh, that God wants us to take care of each other. Uh, and it's just gonna become a monumental task on, on uh, legislators to figure out how to get that money back and do it in a way that uh, doesn't cripple our economy uh, and keeps us moving forward. More with Hank Gilbert after the break. Thanks for being with us this morning on ETX Covered. Let's once again continue our conversation with congressional candidate Hank Gilbert. On the campaign side, um, you say that you've had the most successful fundraising and been able to spend the most of any Democratic candidate in a time since Louis Gohmert's been in office as a, to, to challenge him. What do you think has made the difference for you to, to be able to get those inroads among donors and to have this kind of spending power? You know, it's not me. I mean, I, I think my message resonates with a lot of people, but I honestly believe it's not me. I believe that there is, that there is such fatigue when it comes to my opponent uh, that people just, they're done with him. Uh, you know, some of the things that he has said publicly throughout his career, uh, just make him look goofy and make him sound goofy. And, 
You know, I have people all the time, and, and some of these people, you know, attend the same church he does, that, that tell me that they're just tired of being embarrassed. You know, it was bad enough we had Rick Perry go into the national limelight in his oops moment and everything else, and then we've got Louie, and, you know, Texans aren't that way. And I'm, I'm not saying that, you know, I want to go to Washington because I want to show them what a real Texan is. No, I want to go to Washington to do what a representative is supposed to do. And that's to be the voice for the constituents, whether they voted for him or not. Get up there and do the job that they want, not what you want to do. Uh, and I, I don't have an agenda and I'm not a party ideologue like Louis is. The interest of the of the constituents and their needs are always going to come ahead of anything else. Uh, you know, I tell people this, and I and I mean it. If a Republican member of the House introduces a bill that's going to help the majority of the people in Congressional District One of Texas, I'm going to fight like heck to support it. And and if a Democrat introduces one and it don't, I'm going to fight it. I don't care about the party label. You know, obviously, a lot of people have voted already. Um, yeah. We know tens of thousands have voted in East Texas so far. Yeah. Uh, but for those folks still making up their minds, any last messages you want to leave? Sure. Them with? I, I want them to, to, to go to my site, hankfortexas.com, listen to, watch some of the videos that we've got there. Uh, you know, there's a stigma that, well, you know, you're a Democrat. Well, most people my age that, that grew up here are Democrats. They changed parties. I didn't. But we still have the same type of, 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 of feelings about how government should operate. I think we have the same amount of compassion for people to make sure that, that we always work in the best interest of the people. I'm going to hold two town halls a year, public town halls, in every county in the district. So that's 24 opportunities you have to come ask me what you want to say, what you want to say, because to me, the reason for those is not only to hear what your uh, constituents think and, and to answer their questions, but you need to know from them what type of job you're doing and what they want you to do when you go back. And so that's my whole purpose of holding these. I'm also going to send a copy of every one of those bills to the library in the county seat of every county. So for all those people who out there who think that maybe I'm not telling them the truth or they don't want to believe me because I'm a Democrat, Ethics the bill's going to be there for you to read yourself. Well, and we'll highlight everything that I put in my summary because I believe government should be transparent and people should know what's going on. And I believe also that's one of the reasons Lily Gomert continues to vote against infrastructure improvements like internet because he don't want the people to know what's going on in Washington. I do. It's their government. It's their house. It's their tax dollars. They should know. I want to know. Whether I'm your congressman or regular Joe Blow, I want to know what's going on up there because it's my money they're spending.